Hello guys, this is Zero Tools. Today I'm going to take a look at case plate Japanese style pricking iron. Uh, this is also called diamond chisel or stitching chisel. I have a 4mm spacing and I have a 2 and 10 teeth. Okay, they changed the box recently I think and uh, I really liked it. There's a protective foam lid on the on the top and they come with a plastic bag in each each tool and uh, here is the what it looks like. Uh, this is a pre-order version. Actually, this is not a final one. Uh, they are uh, talking with Japanese craftsmen uh, if they need to be changed anything. So this is the almost final version, I should say. It's a pre-order version. So they are testing the markets and uh, they are listening to feedbacks. You know, it was only available in, in South Korea, so you know I get to have a chance to try these first. Okay. So I, before I talk into the details, uh, I would like to show you where you can buy this tool. Uh, okay, so uh, this is caseplaypunch.com website. Uh, they will make, this is their company's main website. Uh, they have a dealers in Japan and US. So if you are in different countries other than Japan and US, you can buy directly from here. So they are shipping out from Korea to to other countries. Okay. So they are selling pricking irons, round dent, broke punches, and interchangeable punch, which is you can change the, this tip uh, to the handle. So with just a change in the tip, you have multiple sizes of punches. Uh, you have a watch strap punch here, which is very nice from them. You know, no one really makes high quality uh, watch strap punch, which will make a series of holes in line perfectly. So this is very nice product from them. It's a watch strap punch. Uh, it's a blade punch. is something that you can cut in line. I mean, base like slit cuts uh, for like uh, card pockets, card slots, or anything that you need to something do something uh, very like thin lines of a cut. You just uh, there's a blade in it here, so you can just punch it, and it it cuts very thin line here. And also they sell just a single punch. You know each each punch has a each size, and uh, yeah, also the tray for the for your tools. Uh, they are actually they they are a company who makes industrial punches for like uh, semiconductors and other kinds. So they know how to deal with the steels and heat treatment. Uh, so they are now making leather tools now. So you will you will see how they they're good they are making stuff so it's very trustworthy company it's just uh, it's it's good to see that companies like this are involving into lead tool making and they're listening to crafters from around the world to 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 get the feedback so actually they're the company who listens so it's it's very nice and if you are from US uh, this is the uh, distributor from um, from US it's uh, RockyMountainLeatherSupply.com. Uh, so, in the, in the tool section, you will find a series of case blade punch uh, tools. Uh, so here's the hole punch and the broke punches, interchangeable punches, and pricking irons. So if you are in US, you can buy directly from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. Uh, they are they're the the official seller of the case blade punch, and they are shipping from US to US. So within US, you know you will get much quicker than you are directly getting from. South Korea okay so I think the shipping is of course is cheaper so yeah and if you are in Japan right now you may get the tools Caspay punch tools here uh, it's gone yeah here it's a uh, it's a very recently launched company it's a global high-end tools dot stores dot JP uh, it's a global high-end tool so they they selling case they are selling case blade punch and emmy rock breaking iron and the other kinds of Japanese tools leather tools to internationally so this is uh, all the tools they are selling most of them sold out already <laughs> I can see so uh, some linen threads case blade punch tools here very nice very nice to see that you know Japanese tools are in now exporting to worldwide okay so yeah, I should say in Japanese so maybe Nihon wa kuchira de hanbai shimasu okay so if you are in Japan you can you can buy from here it's a it's a Japanese Japanese company I should say Japanese website okay all right so 
I'm going to show you what's like and what is different. Okay. Oh, no, I should think it's show. It's better to show you. Let me show you what the um, average Kyoshinel, uh Japanese style pre can looks like first. Okay. So I sharpened this. Uh, I mean, I polished this uh, in the previous videos. So it's it's not. If you get this new, it's not this shiny. Okay. Uh, come on, focus. Yep. It looks like this. Okay. So. Okay. Oops. So it's just the. Sorry, guys. It's so the air. Yep. It looks like this. Okay. So it 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 makes a diamond shape of a of a teeth. Okay. And it looks like uh, some kind of a sword. Yeah. Some kind of sword is. This is also four millimeter spacing. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So four mil Kyoshinel one, and this is what is called Iwataya in Japan. Uh, this is actually one of the popular tools in Japan. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's made by craftsmen in Japan in Tokyo. Uh, what is called you can buy this in Iwataya, but. Uh, I have a full set of these pricking iron, but I'm not going to review them because it's you can't really get them anymore. It's uh, what should I say? The um, the popularity get gone so high that it can't. It's impossible to get this tool even if you are in Japan. Okay, so it's it's you know they are you know, behind of many orders, so they don't take any orders. So. You know, it's it's kind of sad, but you know, it's it's a, one of the best tools in Japan. You know, most pro crafters, professional makers use this pricking iron. So you may see this a lot on in Japanese craftsmen's Instagram. Uh, but it's really hard to get tools. It's called Iwataya. They have a size with the numberings without any of the size in millimeters. But just this number makes you know how to count uh, different uh, teeth spacing. But uh, anyway, so this is. 4.3 millimeter spaced ones. Okay, it's a size eight. So this is the one that closes to four mil. So I just brought this. So it's like looks like this. So this is new. Okay, uh, you need to polish this. You need to sharpen this on both sides. So you get the um, you get easy easy smooth in and out. But I haven't touched a bit. It's just as new as as you get from the maker. So it's it looks like this, okay. So comparing with this one, you know, it's uh, more of a refined version of uh, pricking iron in Japan. So the, I think that's why pre many crafters prefer this tool. But teeth is very wide. I mean, it's uh, what should I say? It's very wide teeth. Okay, so. As the number goes less, the size spacing goes wider, and as it gets wider, the teeth actually gets bigger. So, if there's only the maximum, the 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 longest thing you can get is only size five, and it has very big teeth in them. Okay, it will have five teeth in the in the same spacing, and the teeth will get bigger, bigger as the spacing gets uh, larger. So, anyway, it looks like this. Okay, and then today's topic: KS blade punch, four millimeter spacing. Okay, looks like this. Okay, so it's it looks fairly interesting, isn't it? So I'll just point it out something here. I use I'll use this divider for the pointer. So. Okay, so how it this teeth is ground is that they have ground this side, okay, and they have ground this side, and then they have ground this side, and then here you can see they have finely ground at the tip here to make it as a rounded effect, and also it just creates a more of a refined version of a diamond, diamond teeth, okay. Sure. So it's not a symmetrical grinding if you if you see it like this. 
so only the part here is the ground and once more and of course if you flip it here only this part is only ground once more so as you can see right now here it gets a more of a rounded and the um, smooth teeth and of course as you can see have you already noticed that it comes very highly polished so it, you don't need to touch up anything it's just uh, it's a very shiny and it's easy to get in it's easy to get out so you are ready to go once you get it okay so and if you see the side profile here it's a, it's a very thin profile so if you as the this gets into the leather very deep you don't see of a hole gets any more larger than this of a, of a very consistency of a grinding so if you see this this Chanel pre can only the very tip is uh, very sharp and the rest of it is uh, just uh, one thickness so you only get the benefit of very small holes just uh, about two mils and then right after the two mils right from here to here is all the way thick okay so in the of course Iwataya here is also very thick okay so just uh, let, let's compare these both three items here it looks like the case but is the most thin one in these three okay so the far left is the um, economic version it's a very cheap tool and the middle one is the best tool in Japan and then here is made in Korea KS Play Punch and it looks like we have thinner one on the KS Play Punch and uh, I will just show you the, what the whole size looks like uh, in the later part but actually you can as you can just see from from the view of this side view you can already see who, who who makes the thinner holes okay so let's just uh, take a look at the uh, body and the everything I would write details uh, what's good thing about them is that as you can see there's a small holes in them it's this is actually not a hole it's, this is actually a very small s set screw inside okay so what this means if you drop something if you drop it here from from tabletop to bottom of your workshop if you're one of the uh, the teeth gets broken or uh, if it's bent you can just replace this tip this teeth and you can just uh, you can get the new one okay so uh, you know it back in the uh, old times like these tools uh, if they have a broken teeth in the middle or the at the at the, at the very side uh, your tool is pretty much like out of use uh, or you may have to use in different ways uh, it'd be very heartbroken if you drop the tools and you have a bended teeth and you have to try to strain it and you broke break the teeth but uh, case play come up with uh, this clever solution that you can change their teeth and uh, I believe for about one year it's a uh, free of charge you can just you just pay the shipping and they just can replace the teeth so it's a uh, very nice 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 thing about them okay and the body is all uh, made of very high quality steel and uh, they do like a, they got they kind of do like a CNC type of engraving I'm not sure what it is but uh, they have a, this is not a, like a printed printed uh, ink or anything it's just the slight I, I can feel very slight of uh, etched etched feel so I think it's a pretty wear resistance they have a they do the size spacing here and they do the mark the teeth how many teeth they have and uh, they have cast by punch markings and overall they have a, like a, some kind of anodized finish or kind of some kind of um, matte finish of a look so it look it looks pretty pretty nice. It's uh, it's a, it looks a very uniform in color, so it's it's very nice. I think this is oxidized finish, but uh, they do it very um, uh, do it very clean clean look. So they do it all uh, very uniform to shape. So it, as you see from the top, you can see they have ground the sides of the round balls, and they have the different parts of the head and the handle construction with the screw and uh, once I tried to remove one of the teeth by myself so uh, different different breaking irons I tried to take out the one teeth out of uh, uh, from here and I unscrew the 
set screw somehow and then I tried to pull it out but I, it never came out so I, I contacted the case play what's happening there is that they also did some kind of gluing here so that it can be you know hard to move by yourself so you know don't worry that if it's going to be pulled out while you're using uh, they have actually they have um, a, a ground a uh, slots with a, within a teeth so this set screw is holding the teeth mechanically and they also bonded uh, glue this um, this teeth into this metal head by special glue so there's no worry that this will this teeth will going to fall out with the use I, I actually tried to remove the plier and it, it's never moved even without the set screw so I think that's it's a fairly safe um, fa safe construction for the teeth and the pricking and the use okay all right so I think I spoke enough oh I have to mention you thing uh, case blade offers you a custom size and custom length of the teeth so uh, I think it's a, it's a hard to use but if you want like a 30 teeth this is 10 teeth okay so if you want like a 30 teeth you can order it okay so you know these kind of brands they offer you you know just a specific teeth number and you have to go with it but case blade you can customize your spacing and also how many teeth you want to have so it's it's a it's a good that if you want something for your special purposes you can you can order like a, some kind of um, special tool custom made tools with them you contact them about the pricing and everything you know so i have seen i think i've seen 20 teeth uh i think maybe 35 maybe i i saw like this this big of a pre and teeth lined up with the with the handle so as the teeth as you have many teeth on your tool it's it will be hard to use all the way penetrate all the way through because the energy just uh, just separates in each teeth but um, you know it's it's up to you if you hit it enough hard you can you can get the same result as these ones but uh, you have to consider that also okay so in the next part I will just show you how the holes and the stitching looks like Okay, so I'm going to test on various kinds of leather. This is uh, chrome tan leather, and uh, I'm going to do uh, do the like performance test, how well they penetrate leather. And you need some kind of granite and the HDPE uh, cutting board. And on top of that, I'm going to use this glued piece of leather board. Uh, this is fa fairly flexible, but they're so going to save a lot of uh, the edge tips. I don't want to hurt my tools, uh, so I would use the leather board here. So uh, I'm going to be very fair. I'm going to use same blow with this hammer in each time. So I'm going to see how well these penetrate and the, how the size of the hole looks like. Uh, I have all the samples here ready, but I'm going to show you in front of you. So uh, for the chrome tan leather, you may not see the holes very correctly, as also this is uh, black leather, so it may not the holes may look like. Uh, big but so I would just take test it anyway so uh, this is Kyushnel here okay it did not go all the way through as you can saw you just saw it just fell it out from the leather and uh, this is your tile and uh, yeah also it didn't go through but it stays intact and uh, cast blade. Oh, yeah, they did. Uh, I just, it just pulled it out as, as I picked it up, but uh, here, yeah, as you can see here, it, it penetrated all the way through with the same blow. Okay, uh, so next, a uh, very thin piece of, uh, of a goat skin. It's also chrome tan leather. It penetrate through. It penetrate through. Yep. Oh, keep in mind that even though cast blade is very sharp and you know it's ready to go. Uh, 
right now in this experiment that this have a six teeth and eight teeth and this is has a ten teeth so energy transparent is little different so case blade is not in a good position for this experiment but uh but you just uh, bear in mind that you know computing with a smaller uh, number of teeth uh, this is doing very nice you know just uh, just wanted to mention so okay yep it looks like it penetrate the the most deeper deeper in into the ladder so I'm going to show you the teeth of the holes looks like you may not seeing this well here right so next piece I'm going to test this on a hard vegetable tan leather this is almost uh, it looks like a 2.2 mil or 2 mil uh, this, let me show you just uh, let me just check it like correctly I don't wanna okay this is oh it's a 2.0 Zero 09, so it's almost 2.1. Okay, so here, almost went through, but not quite yet. Almost went through. Okay, I, I can feel very that tip here, but I cannot see the tip. Okay. Iwataya Yeah, also this one I can't this one is not uh, deeper as the Kyoshinel. It's I can feel the tip here, but uh, I Feel the spumpiness here. I can feel the tip on this side, but not not all, through all the way Okay, and the cast blade Oh yeah, <laughs> let's check this out. He penetrated all the way through with the same blow, and oh, it looks like the. Let me show you the whole sizes. Okay, so top one is Kyoshinel, and the middle one is Iwataya, and the bottom one is KS Blade. It shows smaller holes than Iwataya, and it penetrates all the way through. It almost they are very identical, so yeah, okay. So I'm going to just show you my sample. Uh, I prepared this <laughs> before the video uh, because it was very interesting, and I want to see. I wanted to see the um, how it's different. So it's this. Uh, what I did is basically I um, I got the uh, one backing uh, leather. And I glued all kinds of pieces of leather that I have, and I did a performance testing on each each freaking um, iron. Okay, so here he is. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, you guys may get confused. I I didn't want to write something on the sample, so I didn't write anything. But I will just tell you here. This is a Chrome Excel horse hole strip. Okay, and this is the uh, average vegetable tan leather. This is uh, Italian vegetable tan leather. This is also Italian vegetable tan leather, but it has a different thickness. And this is also uh, Italian vegetable tan leather, but just a different company, I mean tannery. And this is a Spanish vegetable tan leather. And this is also Spanish vegetable tan leather. And these three is all chrome tan leather. This is gold skin that I just uh, did performance test on. And this is the sheep skin. This is very soft leather. Okay. I had a hard time gluing this and cutting it straight right here like this. And this is a chrome tan cowhide okay and uh, I'll show you the difference thickness different thickness uh, as being okay, it's not focusing very well okay um, chrome excel horse butt pretty thin uh, vegetable tan leather this is also vegetable tan leather red one and this is vegetable tan leather it's almost this one to have a same thickness uh, these all three have a like a hard type vegetable tan leather and uh, Spanish vegetable tan leather. This is these two ones are like a soft, soft type. Uh, let me show you. So the one that I use this one is the hard vegetable tan leather. Uh, this is not a because of the thickness. Uh, even though you scarf this, 
this leather is pretty stiff one okay not hard as a board but this is very hard hard type vegetable tan leather so these three are hard type vegetable tan leather and this is soft vegetable tan leather so even though it has a fairly good thickness okay and but it's it's softy it's uh, very malleable so it's a very soft soft type vegetable tan leather so these two are soft type vegetable tan leather and uh, I didn't show you this one it's a uh, very soft sheepskin okay soft stretchy type okay so without talking I'll show you the result okay uh, top one here is Kyoshinel and middle one is KS Blade and the bottom one is Iwataya okay Kyoshinel KS Blade Iwataya okay the middle one is cast blade and you will see the difference in each type of leather okay. of course I'm going to show you how the stitching looks like after, after, after I show you this okay. so cast blade is shows the uh, smallest holes in all three of them okay. uh, on some kinds of leather it doesn't really show the difference because of the how the thin leather is or the how soft the leather is but uh, on a like hard type vegetable tan leather that you would normally might use shows very distinctive difference For example um, this one is very thin so a uh, red color one doesn't really show the difference three brands on three brands but uh, these ones you see the difference these ones you see the difference one of the hard type vegetable town leather and also these ones okay all right I just thought some very fun little experiment uh, this is a piece of vegetable town leather glued to one another uh, this one has thickness of I think about 2.5 millimeter thickness in each yep 2.5 millimeter uh, thickness and I have five of these okay so I'm going to stack this accordingly and I'm going to measure this thickness to yep it's a zero and uh, the whole thickness is uh, 7.68 millimeter okay and it's about this thick and even the longest teeth case plate doesn't cannot go through all the way okay so what I'm going to show you here is that what will happen in each layer of leather this will show you uh, how the hole looks like if it gets thicker and thicker okay so on the first layer uh, you will experience you will see the whole what the holes looks like if you use the thickest leather and it's on the third second layer you will see thinner and thinner thinner and the, at the bottom five I'm not sure which which one will make it to the last but let's see let's see what it looks like okay okay I'm going to do each blow test on on same below and I'm, we're going to see how well they're going to penetrate also okay same below one two oops just move a little bit but yeah just move a little bit <laughs> just this, this moves okay I'm going to do it again sorry guys okay, I'm going to test it on here yep one Two, three, four. Yeah, it's it's all the way through. It's it bottomed out, so I cannot go any deeper. So I have to careful. I I cut. I got cut last time here. Okay, so let's one one by one. We stuck in here. Okay. Okay. All right. So, 
on the first, second, and third, fourth. Okay, it didn't make it to the fifth. Uh, it made it to the fourth layer. Okay, it made a very small hole. Looks like I had a, like a small tap into the leather. And third hole, this will be just an average pre client mark. You will see. And if it gets thicker, you will experience these, this mark. And at the thickest, you will see this kind of a very big holes. Okay, so I'm going to maybe compare these, the different brands. Uh, I'm going to maybe test the UR tire on this one. Okay, so I'm going to try at the bottom of the tool. Okay, I think it bottomed in, just uh, it doesn't go through. Okay, let's see. Oh, it didn't make it to the fourth. Okay, uh, this is Kyoshinel's mark. Uh, of course, fifth, I don't see anyone make it. Anyone make it? It's uh, Kyoshinel. And the bottom one here is, is uh, Iwataya right now. Okay, and uh, Second one, of course. All right. So, if it's very thick, it makes this kind of a hole. And if it's a little bit thinner, looks like this. And looks like this and could not make it to the fourth okay so let's see yeah, for the for the case blade how how will they will do it okay it's kind of fun isn't it yeah i'm enjoying this experiment okay it just is getting too close to the edge so i gotta be careful not to make this fall okay one one below it will already it's really deep three I mean two I mean three okay with three below it's it's in all the way uh, oh it's it's actually it's not sorry it's uh, the only this part gets got more in I just uh, I need a four blow is it in oh two, two five bottomed in this part first so yep okay so no one made to the fifth okay no one made to the fifth and oh cast play made to the fourth and it looks like very clean hole looks like this Kyoshinel made to the fourth but it just uh, looks like a small dot maybe almost small holes but check this case blade hole case blade punch holes nice okay and oh it removes very easily you know and uh, and third layer shows this difference and uh, second layer it shows the smallest not the smallest but similar similar holes Right, so, so the first layer is the more, actually the hardest to get it out from. Okay. Actually, you don't really do this kind of stuff uh, with the pricking iron because usually you never stitch like a one centimeter thick leather. Okay. And the uh, case plate has many teeth in them, so it's kind of <laughs> hard to get it out from. Okay, it kind of stuck it out. Okay, all right. So this is kind of abuse test, and looks like we have a holes from Kyoshinel, Iwataya, and the case blade. 
the second one you have very clean look and third one is uh, looks like this again and the fourth one no one made to the fifth one because this is obvious because the thickness of the of the leather is actually longer than the teeth itself I mean <laughs> it was I think it was stupid to expect something that will go through all the way to the fifth because no one can do because of the thickness okay so no one can really get into the fifth layer because of the of the teeth size I mean the thick long at the length okay uh, the cushion I mean the case blade has the longest teeth get this out okay so if I measure it from to the same line case blade has the, the longest teeth okay so I can confirm that uh, without fifth layer you can mark your holes all the way to 10.11 millimeter thickness of leather okay so imagine you glue this leather and then you do the pricking iron mark and then your mark will be printed onto the fourth layer of the leather and you do finish with the old work and then you will just uh, you know good to go with the stitching okay so again let's just try on the fifth fifth layer how, how easy it is to uh, do the pricking iron mark all the way and how easy to get it out okay so first oh, first Kirchner okay cut it out and uh, you want to uh, Okay, because it's not polished, it's hard to get it out from. Okay, and uh, KS blade. Yep, it removes very easily. And look at the whole difference from top Kyoshinel, middle KS blade, bottom. Oh, sorry, <laughs> this is Kyoshinel, middle one is Iwataya. The bottom one is the um, case blade again. Just uh, want to show you the difference. And the stitching, I will show you the stitching, what the stitching looks like on the, on the samples here. Okay. Alright, so stitching is done. So here it is. I didn't hammer it yet. Uh, just wanted uh, to show you before the hammering in each leather. Uh, again, it has different characteristics of the leather uh, and it has a different uh, thickness to it also. So, uh, this have all kinds of variations and uh, all types of leather combined. So, this will just uh, give you the idea how it uh, might uh, look like in each, so, each leather. So, so, the top one is Kyoshinel again. Uh, top one is Kyoshinel. The middle one is KS Blade. And the bottom one is Iwataya. And I will just to want to remind you that the uh, Kirchner and the KS blade is four millimeter spacing, but the Iwataya doesn't have four millimeter spacing, so I chose four point three millimeter spacing. So uh, you, you keep in mind that in stitching might uh, look a little bit different. Uh, that's why. Okay, so on a Chrome XL horse butt strips, looks like this. Uh, Japanese pricking iron uh, stitching. Uh, uh, stitching looks like more of a rice grain. Uh, it's a little bit different from European pecan, so uh, it looks like uh, kind of like these. Okay, so uh, middle one is uh, just the average type of vegetable tan leather, and this is uh, Italian uh, vegetable tan leather. Also, the yellow one is also Italian vegetable tan leather, but the red one is much thinner. Okay, so thick. I mean, more than. Uh, two millimeter and thin that will be around uh, about 1.5 millimeter to one millimeter okay a vegetable tan leather also the brown one is also vegetable tan leather and uh, 
This one is a soft type vegetable tamada from Spain and also this one is also from Spain has a more of a gloss to it is a vegetable tan leather uh, this one is very thin chrome leather it's a goat skin and uh, this one is ship skin from Spain also and uh, this one is chrome leather very thick tug but soft now you gotta adjust your tension while you do the stitching on the soft leather because as you pull hard, you will squeeze the grain of the leather tighter and the uh, your stitching will look like very small if you tie it too much. So you gotta adjust to your tension to it. All right. I like the stitching on the red one. A very thin uh, gold skin glued to your best tan leather backing. And stitching looks nice on this one. Okay. So I'm going to hammer it down to uh, make the holes a little bit smaller and also to make the stitching a little bit um, nicer so about the noise outside. Okay, so now it's hammered down. It looks like this. And back stitching also is very nice on both. I mean, three of the pricking irons. Uh, so this was the um, what should I say the uh, the pricking iron uh, cast blade pricking iron is uh, it's it's very nice product. Uh, they're doing it really well. Uh, they've been making lots of little tools recently, and they're one of each every product is very nice. Uh, it's a, I, I say it's a revolutionary. Uh, tool makers. Uh, I keep in mind that this is pre-order version, so uh, they will uh, get the feedbacks from the Korean crafters and the uh, Japanese crafters. So there will be uh, some of the changes on onto the final product uh, they're making. They're going to release to the public market. So um, I think you know, you know, maybe some minor issues uh, can be handled. So you know, we it's a, it's a highly expected that what they come up with. You know, so after the beef bag, you know, I, I think it there will be uh, even better product that will they will sell. Okay, so that was it. So this was Casplay Punch um, uh, Japanese style pricking iron. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I have uh, more videos coming. So all right. So thank you for watching, guys. And uh, I hope you spend a great day. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.